one of the first orders of business was to assemble the docking module in the bay. Um, and that involved uh, using the cannon arm to install this large five-ton uh, five Russian docking module onto the top of the orbiter docking station here in preparation for attaching it to Mir. But we got it uh, carefully in position within about uh, fractions of an inch and fractions of a degree, and then Ken fired the thrusters and slammed the two mechanisms home, and the mechanism just worked perfectly to lock them together. I think this is where you see that all the training and teamwork uh, really come into play because everybody was uh, doing all the things we've been trained to do. We were working very closely, and we were able to bring these two pieces of Russian hardware together uh, on orbit 215 miles up, uh, exactly where the Russians wanted them. And as you'll see from the outside view, the, uh, the whole operation proceeded very gradually. There in the lower right, you can see the view if you were sitting out on the left wingtip as these two parts come together. Space Shuttle Atlantis has successfully docked with the Russian space station Mir, 250 miles above the Earth. The Americans are delivering food, water, and clothing to the cosmonauts who've been in space for two and a half months. Chocolates, flowers, and a handshake in space. Cosmonaut and astronaut greet each other 250 miles above the Earth. It's only the second time the space shuttle has docked with the Mir space station. This time was much more difficult than the first. Atlantis used a 15-foot long docking collar to connect with Mir, being very careful to avoid the space station's protruding solar panels. Realizing the pressure between the two spacecraft, this has to be equal before they can open the hatch. And you see there them floating in between between the two cars. These are the American astronauts, what, floating into Mir? Is That's that? right. These are the Americans. They've just opened the hatch. They're making sure the cables that carry the microphones are, are not snagged. And uh, eventually we should get pictures uh, closer to the docking collar and possibly from the other side. But they've now opened the uh, connection between the two craft. Uh, they've presumably shaken hands on the other side because earlier we were able to see through the transparent window uh, the Russians yeah. beckoning them and waving to them as they uh, went through the final removal of the seals before they were able to uh, open the hatch. Now, the Russian cosmonauts um, on Mir have been there for, uh, what, two or three months now. They must be pretty relieved to see some, some new faces, aren't they? It's certainly a hard grind when you're, you're in space, particularly on the, the Mir space station. It's very hard work. You have to spend a lot of time exercising to keep your body uh, fit to overcome the problems of weightlessness. Um, and it is very lonely. It is, uh, the communications with the ground aren't very frequent and aren't very good. So these are going to be very welcome visitors indeed. So now, are we seeing the um, astronauts actually inside Mir? Or? Yeah, that's right. They've just moved um, from the space shuttle's docking adapter, and they're now in the Mir space station. You see there those white, uh, huge uh, air vents which uh, channel air around the Mir space they're station. They're looking pretty happy, aren't they? That's right. They have their cameras, and they're, they're moving along what is the inside of the crystal module. You see there, following the white vents, towards the Mir core section where most of the cosmonauts are waiting to, to greet them. They're moving along now, live. Uh, it's fantastic imagining or knowing that these pictures are coming live from space, isn't it?